Good morning, everybody. This is Julia Day. I'm with the NPD group, and um, it's fantastic to be here with all of you. I wish we were in person, like outdoor retailer, um, but um, it's still great to be with you. Um, it's myself and Matt Powell today. Um, we're with the NPD group, and we are going to be taking you on a, um, a ride to, to show you what's happening um, at retail, consumer behavior in the outdoor industry. Um, but we're also gonna kind of take a step back first and Matt's gonna give you a broader presentation on the, um, the, the, the general retail industry and then um, the sports. And then we're just gonna keep narrowing it down until we get to the nitty gritty of what's happening, what are the top sellers in the outdoor business. Um, so um, just to give you a little bit of background, I think a lot of you that are here and in attendance, um, a lot of you that are in attendance um, have uh, been here before. And so what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna give you a little background on, on who we are and who NPD is. Um, and then we are going to, um, Matt's gonna take over, he's gonna give you this overview. Then I'm gonna come in and do a deep dive into outdoor specialty, what's selling, what's happening there. Um, and, and, and then I think you should, should have it all covered. Um, just to give you a background about NPD, NPD um, tracks point of sale data from over 290,000 doors, including e-commerce platforms. We um, cover 20 different countries. And um, we also do more than 12 million consumer surveys. Um, I'm with the sports business. Matt is our global industry analyst and advisor for sports. And sports, we really cover apparel, footwear, equipment, and accessories. So we're covering the entire sports landscape and we're covering it across all sports. So whether we're looking at baseball and basketball or tennis and golf, running, fitness, uh, cycling, outdoor snow, um, that's what we're covering. We're gonna give you some perspective on the other sports and then we'll deep dive into the outdoor business today. So why do we do what we do at NPD and, and how does it fit in? So we really look at this data, this information which helps inform your business. So it's what's happening. Matt's really going to dive into his expertise and, and understanding the marketplace and understanding what's going on and really saying, okay, what's happening with the data, what's the so what to that, and then Matt's really going to get into what's next and what should you be thinking about in the future. Um, so I'm going to introduce a man that really needs no introduction. Um, this is somebody that you probably are all following and engaging with on Twitter, so you know how to, to contact him. Um, he's been in the retail industry for almost 50 years. Um, he is our global analyst and our advisor. He, um, I, as I used to say, Matt, you used to travel year round. Um, I think all, we've all been grounded since early March, um, but we're all here today. And Matt, um, please. Uh, yeah, it's a, it a 19 weeks without uh, getting on an airplane. It's, uh, it's a, been a very strange ride for that, for sure. <laughs> Uh, but thank you, Julia. So I um, uh, just quickly on me, I have been in the retail business for about 46 years uh, in the sporting goods industry for about 29 of those. And I have uh, been doing research on the industry for um, uh, for the last 20 years. I actually just yesterday took, crossed over 23,000 LinkedIn connections. So uh, another milestone there. Um, I'm going to take you through some some uh, alternate data that we have and some interesting cuts that we have to look at the data, um, and uh, and then we're going to talk specifically about some of the sports categories. Um, we have an affiliation with a company called Civic Science. Um, they do online uh, spot surveys, uh, and um, one of the things that they have been tracking is consumer sentiment around ideas about uh, getting a new job, about the economy in general, about making a purchase, and and so forth. And you can see. All those indices uh, were re relatively steady until we got into mid-March, and then the bottom dropped out. Um, uh, the, the really interesting thing is that it's come back a little bit, um, but in more recent weeks, we've seen, uh, we've seen a decline again. So uh, I think there are still con some concerns on the part of the consumer about 
um, about the future, or at least the near-term future. Um, so uh, when the pandemic set in, we uh, decided to, to implement a, a sort of an early indicator system uh, and selected 15 different industries where we could watch on a weekly basis what was happening uh, and try to, give, try to give the industry some, some feedback very quickly on, on where the business was. And you can see that the business really dropped down um, in, in mid-March again uh, as retail stores started to shut down, as uh, cities and as States went into lockdown um, and then made a slow climb out. We see a nice jump the week of 425. Uh, that week was the week that the um, stimulus checks went out and people had the extra money in their pocket. Uh, and, and since then, the business has re stayed relatively steady, jumped up a little bit. The 20th of June, some, some of that's Father's Day shift from the earlier week. Uh, and now is, uh, is starting to slide backwards again. Uh, again, as we're stay, starting to see some of the reopenings uh, slow down, uh, I think there's some concerns on the part of the consumer about the supplemental uh, unemployment checks. Uh, and uh, I'm very much uh, concerned that if we don't see that additional money that we're going to, uh, we're going to slide backwards further. Um, this is a way of looking at it uh, for the week. One week, uh, the dark blue lines are uh, progressive growth uh, against last year, and the lighter blue lines are uh, growth against the previous week. Um, and uh, there, interestingly, are, and I'll show you another slide to illustrate that, but there are some businesses that have been really, really strong during this pandemic. Uh, we saw a very early rise in technology sales, uh, particularly around home technology as people were working remotely. Um, you know, most people didn't have a printer at home. They were, they were using their office to print documents if they needed to print. Um, so people went out and bought printers. People went out to buy cameras so they could do Zoom meetings like this. Um, the small appliance business for the home went way up. Uh, bread makers, Instapots, uh, pizza ovens, uh, all of those things uh, took off. Um, sports equipment sort of was an up and down uh, cycle. In the beginning, it was down pretty sharply, but came back nicely. Um, Automotive aftermarket has been quite good. People have time to work on their car, to uh, wax their car, take care of their car. Um, the apparel business, footwear business is tough. Beauty has been really tough. Uh, accessories have been, have been really challenged. So a, a real interesting mixed bag of, uh, of business trends here. Um, we, we estimate that uh, we're, it, we're pretty close to full capacity from the week this was measured. Again, expect that this is from July 4th that we expect as we go through time and we see more cities and states reverting to uh, the shutdowns that these numbers will fall. Uh, but we're relatively uh, at, uh, at capacity now. This is for the week of June 20th and, and some of the hot categories. And again, I mentioned food, food at home, uh, entertainment at home, keyboards. Hand clean, cleaners have been on this list every week. Um, uh, digital picture frames just to connect with your, your loved ones who may not be there. Uh, the baseball shoe business took off as, as uh, some, schools, some school systems opened up their spring sports late. Uh, that business jumped. Um, so just a real interesting mix of, uh, of what's happening in the industry. Um, so let me uh, switch over now and talk more specifically about what's happening in sports and in general. Um, Prior to, to, to COVID, we were already seeing retailers shutting down their doors. Um, uh, we have had about 4,000 closures announced so far. Um, uh, uh, Coresight Research says we're going to close 20 to 25,000 doors this year. We closed about 9,000 last year. Jan Niffen, who's a retail analyst, says we're going to close a third of the malls. Um, UBS says we're going to close 100,000 doors over the next five years. So uh, th this pandemic is going to have a huge impact on, on retail. Um, and again, um, we, we really need to go through this rationalization as painful as it is. Looking again at civic science, uh, uh, we're seeing that people are reporting that they're exercising more uh, during, the, uh, during the pandemic, and that's great for sports industry. Uh, I think that we'll see this continue. Uh, they also, we asked in our, our uh, checkout tracking um, what your level of activities were before, during, and after COVID. And you can see that pretty much every activity uh, is saying that we're going to grow, uh, see growth in uh, uh, sports activities, fitness activities, 
activities as we uh, as we come out of this. I don't know that we're really going to get to that 29% exercise at a gym number. Um, and I think people are going to be concerned about working out of the gym. Uh, people have spent a lot of money on exercise at home. I'll show you a slide that illustrates that in a second. Uh, and I think that the um, uh, if you've just bought a treadmill, you're, you're likely not to be going back to, to the gym to, uh, to do that. Um, another major change here is uh, online penetration of businesses. We had been tracking last year that about 29% uh, of all shoes were bought online. In uh, the period of March through May, 51% of all shoes were bought online. Uh, and a similar number, 45% in apparel. Uh, we don't think that we go back to the previous levels. We think consumers have learned uh, to shop online. Uh, they're buying more things online than they have ever bought, whether it's uh, meals or, uh, or uh, groceries or sneakers. Uh, and so we think that business changes here. We already thought we were going to hit about 50% a penetration in e-commerce in five to 10 years. Uh, we think the timeline has moved up uh, three to five years. So uh, uh, we, we again expect that we will continue to see uh, high penetration here. And then as I mentioned, with all the store closings that are expected, uh, that's gonna drive even more business to the internet. Looking specifically at athletic footwear, uh, sales were up 3% going into uh, the pandemic uh, and then declined uh, 32% March through May. Uh, overall, uh, sales are down about 20% uh, for the for the uh, first five months of the year. Um, pretty much every brand that was performing better than the market continued to perform better than the market, and every brand that uh, was underperforming the market continued to underperform. But everybody got whacked here. Um, uh, Brooks is one of the few brands that's doing well. Hoka One One and On Running would be a couple of other brands that I would point out that are doing well in the pandemic. Uh, and virtually every category, uh, so, saw a slide here. Uh, our largest category is sport lifestyle. Uh, sales are down sharply there. Um, uh, and the, the running business though is, is an interesting one and I'll share this with you here. This is what we look like and we think about running week by week compared to the previous year. And we can see that now as we have progressed f further into, into time that uh, the, the performance running business is actually up again. Um, and we haven't really had an up year in, in running since 2013. So this is very encouraging. And I think there's a couple of reasons for it. And I think this, this explanation applies to a lot of categories. Um, first of all, I, I think there will be a renewed interest in health and wellness coming out of the pandemic. Uh, I think when we look at the casualties of, the, of this disease, um, many people who, who, who didn't make it out were uh, uh, in ill health, uh, had pre-existing conditions, diabetic, overweight, smokers. Um, and I think there'll be a renewed interest in, in uh, living a healthy lifestyle. I also think the most profound change we're going to see in terms of uh, the, how the pandemic impacts us is, is social distancing. And I think people are going to remain very concerned about staying distance from each other. And so you put those two things together, an interest in a healthy lifestyle and fitness and social distancing and running is obviously a category that comes up. Um, we're in a recession now, and every time we've been in the recession and had increased unemployment, we've seen the running category jump. Uh, I think people are out of work and they're saying, hey, I'd like to lose 10 pounds. Um, and what's the cheapest way to, to uh, get fit is, uh, is to buy a pair of running shoes. So uh, all in, I think we're going to see a change from a soft running business to a much stronger running business as we emerge from the pandemic. Um, all three wearer segments uh, posted double digit declines, um, men's, women's, kids, uh, no, no real big difference there. Uh, switching over to apparel, uh, again, we were up a little bit going into the pandemic and then down 28% uh, March through May. Uh, all, overall, uh, down significantly for uh, the quarter. And um, the biggest losses we saw were in knit shirts, in swimwear, uh, and uh, in pants. Um, interestingly, uh, the underwear business has been pretty good. I think people are reluctant to uh, uh, to uh, go to the laundromat, and so they're just buying new um, sweatpants business remain pretty good. Uh, I think that um, we see sweatpants as the uh, work from home uniform. Uh, I won't ask all of you to stand up and show how many of you are wearing sweatpants today, but I'll bet it's a whole lot of you. 
Um, so so parts, of, parts of the apparel business are decent. Um, again, as we saw um, in footwear, uh, the brands that were underperforming the market continued to underperform and the brands that were outperforming the market continued to outperform. Um, uh, with one great exception, and that's Hanes, and they have a, a huge exposure to um, to Walmart and Target, two retailers who were able to stay open through uh, the pandemic, uh, and uh, I think that really drove their business upwards. Uh, again, by wearer segment, not a whole lot of uh, difference between uh, uh, between uh, each of the segments. Kids a little bit worse here, uh, but all in um, really performing at about the same. Uh, team sports uh, up 13% going into the pandemic, being driven primarily by golf and baseball, um, but the business really collapsed afterwards. Uh, overall, the quarter's down about 14%. Um, and uh, we see the golf business was underwater for the first five months. Um, many states closed their golf courses, and um, uh, I, that absolutely hurt the business there. Uh, many uh, school systems canceled spring sports or postponed spring sports. So baseball and uh, softball and soccer were all down. Um, the basketball business is an interesting one. That business was quite good. The two, two factors here, um, m many cities and towns took down the hoops in their public parks because they didn't want kids to congregate there. Um, and uh, consequently, if you wanted to play, you had to buy a system for your driveway. I think parents were also trying to figure out work from home, stay at home, school, uh, recess, if you will. Uh, and uh, uh, if you've got one or two kids, there are not a whole lot of games they can play together. Uh, uh, and uh, basketball is one of those things where you can go out and shoot in the driveway all by yourself. So uh, that business has been quite robust. Um, the racket sports business, uh, good. Again, I think people see, saw tennis as somewhat self-isolating. Um, and the pickleball phenomenon continued to, uh, to drive home. Um, one other interesting thing to point out is that training aids in every category, even the ones that were deeply negative, uh, were, were much better. Um, and I think people who couldn't do their sport, who couldn't play golf or play baseball, uh, went out and bought uh, uh, whatever kind of training aid they have that would help them uh, stay on, uh, on point in their, in their game. Um, as places began, to, the cities began to open up again, um, the golf business has bounced back really nicely in May, as has the racket sport business. Um, and uh, we think these businesses will continue to be strong as we move through the pandemic. Uh, health and fitness equipment. Uh, business was okay going into uh, the pandemic and then took off like wildfire, um, up 117% March through May. So many people who uh, had been going to the gym wanted to continue to uh, replicate that experience and so bought equipment to use at home. And by the way, the, the, this data does not include any of the verticals like uh, Peloton or uh, Mirror. Um, these are uh, fitness equipment sales that go through a, a secondary party, uh, Dick Sporting Goods, Academy Sporting Goods, et cetera. Um, so overall sales up for the five months, 66%. Um, and every single category showed double digit increases. Um, we are seeing some real shortages now in free weights. Um, uh, and uh, we expect that that number will come down simply because there's not any inventory out there. Uh, and again, my thinking is that if someone made an investment in fitness equipment, it's highly unlikely that they're going to go be going back to the gym to, uh, uh, to work out. So I think these businesses will remain, um, uh, will, 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 will be solid here. And I'm, I'm concerned for the gym industry. Cycling business was really good up uh, prior to the pandemic, um, electric bikes being a big part of what was driving that. Uh, and then again, the business took off. Um, overall up 52% for the five months. And I think some of what we're seeing in cycling is also uh, uh, related to what I was saying about the running business. This is a great way to stay fit and socially distance. Uh, and um, uh, I think this business will thrive as we come out of the pandemic. Um, really interesting when we look at it by category, what's going on here. And I think some, some learning perhaps for the, uh, for the outdoor industry as well. Uh, 
what really drove this business was not road bikes, which is the largest category or one of the largest categories. Um, and the, really the one that we think of when we think about cycling, what really drove this business were kids bikes and family bikes, transit bikes, leisure bikes, and of course, electric bikes. Um, and what I think's happened here, uh, and we're seeing the same thing in running, is that the pandemic has brought a lot of novices to, to these new categories. These are people who have never cycled for fitness before, maybe never run for fitness before. And, you know, I've been critical of the specialty industries that they, I think they've been far too focused on the pinnacle consumer, uh, and the elite consumer, and not nearly focused enough on the family uh, and more casual user. And I think if we look at what happened in cycling, we see here that what really, really saved this industry was this family consumer. It was not the elite consumer. I think some really important lessons here for uh, specialty outdoor, specialty running, uh, et cetera, uh, that, the, that the, the opportunity remains in the more mass businesses. Uh, and then we look at the outdoor business. Uh, sales were not great uh, going into the pandemic and really fell off. Uh, overall sales down 24% for the first quarter, first five months, I'm sorry. Um, and every category really struggling. Um, uh, equipment a little bit better than, uh, than most. Julia's going to take you through some real detail here. Uh, athletic specialty sporting goods categories all down. Uh, E-commerce was good in footwear and equipment. Um, and sports specialty were, were all in decline. Um, and we can see water sports is one of the few categories that actually was up. But there were some bright spots here. And again, I'll, Julia will spend a bit more detail on, uh, on those categories. So uh, just to talk about uh, some forward thinking things, um, what should brands do now? Uh, what should brands and retailers be thinking about? Um, the first thing is obviously to preserve liquidity. Uh, uh, retailers and brands that, that have a strong balance sheet um, are gonna survive this pandemic. Uh, and those who do not uh, are gonna find it much more of a challenge. Uh, so really critical that, uh, that every brand and retailer think about preserving liquidity. But at the same time, and perhaps equally important, is to maintain brand equity. Um, uh, we can't get too promotional here. Uh, we need to make sure we preserve the DNA of what our brands and retailer brands are about um, and, not let, uh, and not let this uh, situation uh, drive us away from um, thinking about brand as, as most important. Um, this is now a time to really double down on your brand purpose as well and think about what, uh, what, what do we want to be, who, who do we want to be, and how do we serve that purpose even better. Um, uh, empathy is critical uh, to share your empathy with your uh, best customers to let them know that we're all in this together uh, and we'll all come out of this if we all hang together. Um, so empathy is re really important uh, that brands are sharing that with their, with their consumers. Um, as I illustrated in footwear and apparel, the e-commerce business has never been more important. It's never been more critical for retailers and brands to have excellent e-commerce sites um, to figure out how to way to, to be able to sell to the consumer online. Uh, we, we're going to see this in every category that the penetration of e-commerce has gone up. As I said, we've moved three to five years into the future in terms of e-commerce. And um, if, if you don't have an e-commerce presence, uh, you're going to find that, that business much more challenging than it was. Um, for retailers and for brands, frankly, this is a time to rationalize your store base. Um, there is not going to be any uh, stigma of going into Chapter 11 to close stores. Uh, we're going to see a lot of that happening out there, strategic Chapter 11s. And uh, this is an opportune time to, uh, to rationalize your store base. It's critical that brands and retailers embrace change. Uh, there is no way we stop the changes that we're facing right now. And again, we're seeing many years worth of change in a, in a very short period of time. Uh, but we have to embrace that change and make sure that we are, uh, uh, we're, we're staying ahead of the curve. The customer has never been more in charge than they are today. We have to listen to what they want. We have to listen to what their concerns are. Uh, we have to make sure that we're fulfilling our promise to them. Um, there's been a lot of talk about markdown averse product and seasonless product. And I think this is a very dangerous strategy. Um, I think that wor the worst thing you can do as a retailer or a brand is to have a plain vanilla assortment of products to only have your best sellers and not have anything that's fun or new. Um, and wh while I know we're all concerned about the future and wh where it takes us, it's really critical that, um, th that we make our assortments as exciting as we possibly can. 
And finally, it's a great opportunity for brands and retailers to uh, think about uh, a time for transformation, uh, to think about uh, how do I want to be a different company coming out of this? What's my point of view on retail coming out of this? What's my customer experience look like? Um, as Winston Churchill said, you never, should never let a good crisis go to waste. So uh, uh, think, about, uh, think about how do you want to kind of company you want to be coming out of this uh, pandemic as well. So thank you for my section and I'll let uh, Julia take over from here. Thank you, Matt. Um, so Matt, while um, we're, we're moving over to a deeper dive into the outdoor business, I'm looking on some of the questions people have been asking. Um, and someone's asking, what does NPD think of the upcoming holiday season? What are your thoughts, Matt? Yeah, we, we think, uh, I think back to school is going to be very challenged and I think holiday is going to be challenged as well. Um, look, we've got millions, tens of millions of people out of work. Um, uh, we are in a recession. Um, we haven't beaten this, uh, this disease yet. Um, in fact, in many ways, it may be worse than it's, it's, it's ever been. Um, and I don't think people's minds are going to be on spending a, a lot of uh, products, uh, a, lot, a lot of frivolous product anyway. I think purchasing will be more practical. I think purchasing will be focused on health and, and wellness um, in the sports industry. I do think that sports can outperform a lot of other categories. Um, uh, you think about, say, the travel business as an example. Um, the travel business is going to be very challenged going forward. People are not going to get on an airplane anytime soon. So um, I think that the, the, well, sports can outperform, uh, but I, I'm not looking uh, that, that we're, we're going to come out of this very quickly. Um, so thank you for that, Matt. And one more question before um, I kind of dive in. Sure. So um, somebody's asking, um, Matt, we've been hearing continuously during this virtual OR show that consumers are more aware now than ever about buying products that are not only sustainable, but also safe for self-use. Is there any information about antimicrobials or antibacterials becoming more prominent in the textile industry? I don't, we, we don't have any data that points, points specifically to that. Our future of apparel study has done some work around that. Uh, and yes, I, th I think people are m clearly more concerned about sustainability and safe products than they've ever been. Uh, and uh, I think there's absolutely no reason not to charge down that road and offer them that product. Uh, I think one of the most interesting findings that we saw, saw out of our future of apparel study was that Consumers are saying they have a willingness to buy of sustainable products. They're willing to pay more for sustainable products, and they're clueless about what's what is offered to them at retail in terms of sustainable products. So, uh, I think that uh, that we can do a better job of telling the customer what's sustainable and why it's sustainable. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, that in many ways will uh, will really uh, will really help uh, our customers understand what we're doing. So Matt, sorry, one more question before I jump in, because um, it's a good one. A lot of the POS has been driven by heavy unemployment subsidies, the extra $600 a week. Yes. What do you think will happen to the current trends when this benefit expires on 731? Yeah, you know, the Wall, the Wall Street Journal said that 68% of people who are receiving this benefit were making more money on an unemployment than they were when they were working. Um, th this has had, we, we saw the impact of the $1,200 supplemental income uh, stimulus checks that went out the end of, of April, um, and that was a one-time payment. I think the, this additional uh, $600 a week has had a massive impact on consumers' ability to buy product. And if it's not replaced, extended, um, I, I think the retail business is going to get a whole lot worse real fast. Well, thank you, Matt. Um, okay, so let's dive into kind of a deeper dive to the outdoor business. So as Matt showed us, you know, what's happened um, year to date. So what happened January, February, and then what's happened March through May. So just kind of as a recap, putting it all side by side, when we look at March, and, and that's really looking at what was open and what was closed, and then what our behaviors were as consumers. So we look at this, you're seeing that 30, 40% decline in footwear apparel, and that 129% jump in home fitness as we all prepared um, to be at home. So to kind of walk through this, what's really interesting is, is looking at March through June sales 
in the sports business, looking at that in the sports business, um, in the context, sorry, I keep going back and forth on these slides, um, but looking in the context and juxtaposing it against um, NPD and Matt showed us a lot of what was happening at retail. So when we were looking, if we kind of go back to March, and really what, what I'm saying here is that in the last four and a half months, we as American consumers have cycled through more buying behaviors um, more buying behaviors than um, we have in the last four and a half years. So really, if we look back at March, March, we were what, what we call prepping. So it was almost like preparing for a hurricane. So in, 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 in um, terms of the greater market, we were buying toilet paper and stocking up on that. But in terms of outdoor equipment, we bought lights, purification, filtration, fuel for our grills. And then we looked and we said, okay, what do we need at home? And in the context of sports, we needed home fitness. Now those training aids that Matt mentioned, especially in golf, it might be putting, it might be putting greens for your office. It might be yoga. It might be the basketball system. So we started to see that. If we're to juxtapose that against the other categories and PD tracks, we saw people were buying the technology. I need more screens or speakers. I need um, the iPads for the kids. I need office supplies. So really that was March. As we move into April, we started to see, and I don't think, I think a lot of us um, either did it ourselves or watched our friends on Facebook or Instagram um, by the bread makers, start the cooking, um, really kind of that process, like understanding that with people working at home, we, we need better coffee makers. How that really translated to sports is we started to look at um, well, if we back up to the bike business, the bike business got to stay open in March because it was essential and bikes took off. Bikes again took off again in April, but then we started to see grills, performance running, kayaks, rec tents. We started to see all of that emerge in April. Um, in mid-April, as you all remember, we were all now buying, whether it was our hair color or, um, or scissors to cut our hair. Uh, we then move into May and we started, again, bikes has never slowed down. So we started bikes, um, we saw bikes, we saw camping equipment, but we really saw kayaking, like kayaking, stand up paddling. We saw golf and tennis come back as, as Matt mentioned. But then we look at June and that's really where it's remarkable. I'm gonna kind of look at some of my notes here um, because that's where things started to really accelerate, um, especially in outdoor. So where we look at coolers and coolers, if we look at the last four months, March through June, coolers were down 5%. If we look at June over June, coolers were up almost 18% in sales. So we start to really look at um, camping, camping accessories really accelerate um, two things. One, you've got Father's Day coming, but I can tell you I was begging my husband for a new cooler for a long time and I finally got it at the end of June. So I'm, I'm part of that 20% statistic there. But we looked at this, we looked at grills and stoves where we started to buy new grills. Um, we started to buy these things, but in June when we really um, started to use them, these sales accelerated. So where fitness equipment uh, was up 130% in March, up 105% for the last four months, we see it slowed down in June to 68%, where we see camping was up 8% the last four months, but 26, almost 27% in the month of June. So we start to really see this huge transition um, to buying sleeping pads and mattresses and camp chairs and camp furniture, et cetera. Um, so really, as we kind of go through these different um, buying behaviors, it's a lot of it's driven by what we're going to do. Now, this is interesting because this gives you through March the top 20 subcategories. But this will really show you across all of sports what was happening. Now this is footwear, apparel, equipment, etc. Um, so we look it up and you see the number one growing um, 12 months ending March, basketball inspired shoes. So how many of us looking back to, to March, you know, watched The Last Dance? Um, so we look at that basketball inspired. We also look at that retro trend. Sweatshirts, um, you know, things that really that we needed um, for the pandemic, that casual athletic, etc., casual bottoms. As Matt talked about electric bikes, this is through March. Electric bikes was one of the very top categories, which has continued to be extremely strong and hasn't waned yet. Now, bottles is something that's different. The water bottles 
that huge growth there. I mean, they're, they're right at the top. That all happened before quarantine and before the pandemic. So that's a huge growth that we still see. Water bottles are still growing, but they had a huge decline in the last four months when we didn't need to go to the gym, kids weren't going to school, et cetera. If we look at the bottom categories, this is really how the business has changed. We look at this and we look at apparel and footwear down. Um, the bottom categories are almost all apparel and footwear with the exception of totes and shoppers. Again, huge declines that we're seeing in these categories. So Matt also talked about top growing brands and Champion again in that um, sweatpants, casual athletic, um, that, that athleisure wear, Champion huge gains. So you really see that trend in comfort there with Crocs. You start to look at the bikes. Um, we see bike categories as being top growing brands. Um, this isn't typical to have multiple bike companies in these top growing brands here. Um, Hydro Flask, again, that water bottle, that's the strength of that category pre-pandemic. Again, it, it stumbled a little bit because of store closures. That's not going to gyms, schools, et cetera. It should come back because it's a, a very self-contained category. You see Brooks there with that nice growth. Um, so you see a lot of brands that are growing. Um, now that's 12 months ending March. So we'll start to look and pick apart some brands that have been growing since then. Um, but we're gonna kind of drill down further into the specialty channel. So we look at specialty, we're looking at bike specialty. Again, an essential service bike stores for the most part did not shut down or shut down to very minimally. So we're looking at almost a 20% growth. This is 12 months ending May. Outdoor specialty down 6%. Again, this is all brick and mortar specialty, not e-commerce. We've taken the e-com out of this. Snow specialty was having a great season until they had to shut down in, in the month of March, their, their last month of the season. And so we're looking at a 5% overall. Julia, I think you're on mute. Thank you, Matt. How long have I been on mute? You're fine now. Thanks. Um, so we look at this $19.5 billion in sales, um, and we look at what's happened in the last 12 months. And this is, again, the, some of the three channels, outdoor specialty, sporting goods, outdoor specialty, e-com. Total business, 12 months ending May is down 8%. We look at this and, and Matt showed us a lot of these, these numbers and he showed it to us what happened January, February, March, April, May. So if we look at 12 months ending, how does this net out? And this is the real change that we're seeing here. Um, the business is, the majority of this business is lifestyle. It's apparel and apparel is down eight and a half percent. So usually when the, if, if we're looking at this and we're talking the past few years, we're talking about apparel being, being very strong. Um, and so now we're seeing this complete opposite. Apparel and footwear are down 8%. Accessories, as Matt talked about, travel down 16%. And then we look at equipment, and equipment just, we've literally flipped everything on its head from us being together last summer to equipment being down only 4.8% with 12 months ending May. So we look at the reality, we're looking at store closures, we're looking, as, as Matt showed us, the online business direct to consumer. So some brands were able to build their online business and, and really grow that in, in this complete disruption that we're seeing. Um, but what's happened to us as consumers is we've clearly said we want to be outdoors. We love the adventure. We love the passion. We love what the outdoors brings us. What has the pandemic also brought us, um, this desire for social distancing. Um, which outdoor activities fit very nicely into. What everybody I think collectively has agreed is the family time is great. And that time outdoors is extremely valuable. Um, we, we, we all knew we're speaking to the choir here, but um, 
we're preaching to the choir here. We, we all knew that it was valuable, but collectively as Americans, we're understanding how valuable it is. As Matt was talking, um, the values that brands bring and consumers want to see from brands, sustainability, and then that taking a stand, um, this is what's really come out and solidified in the last few months. So if we look at this by the number, and we look at the outdoor business, there's 152 million outdoor participants. Now this is from the Outdoor Industry Association's participation study. This is free to everybody. Um, just go to OIA, I'm sorry, outdoorindustry.org, outdoorindustry.org. You can pull this down for free. It will tell you who's participating by sport. I saw a number of questions of people asking me about different sports participation. You will find it there. Um, but what's happening here? So you've got half of the population is participating. You've got a 3% female growth and you've got uh, over half of the people participate to spend time with family and friends, health and wellness, and time in the outdoors because it's enjoyable. So if we look at this and we really start asking ourselves what is happening and how can we begin to capture a whole new set of consumers. You've got 152 million here, where could you take it? Right now, the sky is wide open. When we start to see people say, I've never thought about camping before, I'm thinking about camping now. When we see camping equipment go up almost 27% in the month of June, um, it's really time to start thinking, how can we start capturing a new consumer? So we look at this and we say, okay, we've, as we've described the outdoor business and the core specialty outdoor business, We've all said it's really a lifestyle business. It's apparel, then footwear, um, the accessories that have been exploding, and then equipment's kind of been the second thing. Well, now we start to see as people are really participating and doing these activities and saying, I need to, whether it's camping in my backyard, camping in the mountains, camping on the beach, as people start to say this, they need to buy this equipment. So when we look at this, it's very important that this really has flipped on its head. As Matt showed us, performance running really won um, going through this because again, gyms are closed. What's the easiest way? Just put on a pair of running shoes and go outside. So we flipped everything on its head. Accessories, again, with the travel and luggage, and you're looking at categories that are down, it's down 16% overall, but when we look at it, I mean, you can have categories that are down 55, 60, 70%, and they're due to travel. So <clears throat> moving on to apparel, um, we look at this um, and we're looking at 12 months ending May. We're looking at outdoor specialty stores, so brick and mortar. We've got to remember that every th for outdoor specialty, most were closed in the month of March and, and possibly the month of April and a little bit of into May. So we look at this and we see this, that most categories are down. We take outerwear where the money is, um, that's down 21%. We're looking at swimwear down 19%. So you can see these um, declines here. And you can see where there's lesser declines in things like sweatshirts, which becomes that very casual, um, what we need at home to be comfortable. Now, when you see brands here, what I've done is all of these products are the top sellers in the categories. These brands, though, are brands within that particular category of the top 10 brands, the brands that have showed growth looking 12 months ending May, outdoor specialty stores. So we see in outerwear, Arcteryx is the one brand of the top 10 brands that has pulled off growth in the last 12 months. Um, you can start to see that, that some categories have more brands here in sweatshirts. Um, again, remember this is pure outdoor specialty, so it's everything from Patagonia to Columbia, Prana, et cetera. So you start to see, um, and you start to see new brands emerge that typically haven't been in the core specialty stores like Viore. So now moving on to footwear, looking here, um, this is outdoor specialty. So when we look at outdoor specialty, footwear is down 16% in outdoor specialty. Again, much more impacted by having to close for a longer period of time. But we look at this, running and trail running are down only 5% versus a 22% in hiking or a 19% in water shoes. The brands that you're looking at here that you see, these are all brands that are showing growth. So of the top 10 brands in running and trail running, Hoka and on running 
are both showing growth. Oslo and Hoka, we see four brands here in insoles. In fashion boots, um, where th this, is, this has a, been a new kind of innovative category, we've got four brands showing growth. Slippers, slippers is up 4%, very important during the pandemic. I think we all pulled out our slippers. Um, and you've got multiple brands showing growth. And again, in water shoes, a tiny category that's down, you still have three brands showing growth here. Now, when we move to other footwear categories, here, um, when we're showing, these are the top brands in the category. Um, I don't necessarily know if they're showing growth or not. They may or may not be. You'll have to ask us directly. Um, but these are the top brands and the top models in these other categories. So you can also see like cold all weather boots, that category, which has been um, very consistent, is starting to change. You're starting to see kind of a new style emerge. Fashion sandals, um, we've got the Birkenstock, the Comfort, that hasn't changed. We see that sports sandals haven't changed. Fashion shoes, we're starting to see a change there. And mountaineering, um, La Sportiva, the, the, the top selling brand in there, um, very, very stable within there. So now moving on to outdoor equipment. I don't expect that you'll be able to read this. I'm going to um, read some of it to you. Um, but the so what here is this is the total measured market that we're looking at. And we look at this total measured market here um, for outdoor equipment. So what I've done is by looking at the total measured market, I've brought in everything. So whether it's the mass retailers like Walmart and Target or e-commerce like Amazon, um, clubs like Costco. So really looking at this to say, okay, what happened 12 months ending May and how can we kind of look at this? Cause this is the entire US market. This also includes outdoor specialty stores, sporting goods stores, et cetera. So when I look at this, I sorted it by the largest dollar volume and growth categories. So what here is you've got almost a hundred categories in outdoor equipment that are showing growth. Um, everything from fuel to camp chairs, recreation kayaks. So I'm looking very closely at my screen here. Bottles, rec tents, two season tents, um, et cetera. So you can kind of go down binoculars. I saw a hilarious ad. Um, it was a granola bar ad and it was, um, it was the, the, the new backcountry is your backyard. And it was a couple sitting there with binoculars bird watching in their backyard. So we start to really see how important having these pieces of equipment are when we want to recreate in the out of doors. So when we move here to outdoor specialty stores, we're looking not quite 100 categories, we're looking at half of that. But we look at the same period, 12 months ending May, again, brick and mortar outdoor specialty, we're seeing where we saw 100 categories that were growing, we're seeing 50 categories that are growing here in equipment. And some of them are very much the same. Recreation kayaks, bottles, whitewater kayaks, PFDs, hitch racks, dehydrated food, binoculars, pots and pans, dry boxes, um, water purifiers, camping equipment, solar panels, etc. So you start to see, does this translate to outdoor specialty? Is it still important? To do, will consumers come in and buy? The answer is yes, it's very important. And really the thoughts are, how are you gonna start capturing the consumers and really most importantly, new consumers that are looking for advice. So if we were to kind of cull all of those, that long list that, that's very hard for you to read there on the screen, um, it, it's kind of continues what we've seen the past few years, but it's, it becomes, it takes on a deeper context with the pandemic. So where's the action? Really, if we look at it, it's the outdoor kitchen or the camp kitchen. So whether that happens to be in your backyard or in your campsite, grilling and fuel, we really see that as an extremely strong category and both in portable as well as um, grills that you're not gonna take anywhere. Outdoor comforts. So whether that happens to be in your backyard or whether it's for camping or whether you're moving into a different definition of glamping or RVing, um, you want to be comfortable. Camp chairs, rec tents, shelters, um, social distancing. What, uh, what products have already built in social distancing? Kayaks and SUPs already have that built in. We started to see those sales up in April, stronger in May, and even stronger in June. 
on products for camping, glamping, RVing. I'm putting that all together because really, as Matt kind of said, he talked a lot about empathy and about consumers defining things. And consumers, their meaning of camping could be in an RV, it could be glamping, and it could be um, you know, very, very remote overlanding. So, so it's really how they define it and how are you gonna meet them there. And then self-containment, when we look at a lot of categories that are um, selling, it, it has to do with self-containment, bottles, jugs, portable power. So one of the things I really liked during the pandemic is I have an entire um, cupboard full of water bottles. So, you know, taking a number of people and kids out in the wilderness, I fill up the bags, I fill up the coolers. We don't have to stop anywhere. We are completely self-contained. The same we went on a trip to Wyoming, we saw three other cars. We purchased gas at a gas station where we just, you know, pulled up. We never saw anybody, never stopped in the store. Um, it really, it was almost like the world had ended because we didn't see anybody, but we were completely self-contained. So we also are seeing, somebody asked a question about AT, um, AT and, and the back country and the side country. So once the ski resorts um, and the retail, snow retail stores um, closed in March and the resorts closed, you couldn't find um, a pair of skins to buy anywhere in the country. So we, we, we saw that as a very strong category and then it was even stronger um, once everything was shut down. We've seen overlanding kind of emerge and again, perfect timing as, as the world's changed and people wanna get further and further away from people. Powering up, we've seen products, people wanna be connected and powered up. Food and drinks, we wanna have good food and drinks when we are, are doing this. Um, Self-isolating camping and anything to do with cycling. Um, the, 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 the whole American public has rediscovered cycling. So here we're gonna move on to top dollar volume and growth categories. Um, everything here is the top seller in its category. Again, water bottles did stumble the last four months, but that's really their sales were so strong that we're still seeing that category um, with an increase in the last 12 months, even though it was way, way down. Um, so we've got camp chairs, those are top sellers. Kayaks, top seller is a fishing kayak with a paddle drive. Um, you're looking at rec tents, campfire equipment. Again, a lot of innovation that's also coming out that we're seeing in the top sellers. Um, and fuel, well, fuel is very, very important. Wherever we are, we wanna be self-contained and we wanna have that fuel. Um, headlamps, a very strong category, pots and pans. We don't wanna go camping anymore and have you know, terrible camping food. We'd like to have gourmet food. Portable power, this is the top seller. Um, it's a goal zero and it's, um, I think it allows you also to have Wi-Fi at your campsite. It's a portable grill and a Traeger smoker. Um, again, top sellers within their categories. So really to sum up what's happening, I mean, we could sum up this summer as the great American road trip, right? Everything's closed, we can't do anything. I'm sitting here at my desk with, I'll, I'll show you here all of these tickets um, to concerts that were canceled. So, so really all my trips, all the concerts, everything was canceled. So where are we gonna do, where are we gonna road trip and how far are we gonna go? So whether we're looking at the very first road trip and we're talking to a lot of people that are like discovering camping for the first time. And that camping is probably going to be in an RV. Um, they're like, I would not stay in a tent and I wanna be comfortable. Well, this was, Sunset Magazine's um, May 2019 cover. And so last summer we called it Stylish Adventure. This summer we call it Social Distancing and Comfort. Really like people, people that never, or hardcore outdoor that would have never considered an RV have purchased RVs this summer because they're looking at, or rented, because they're saying, how can I be isolated? How can I social distance? And how can I make this also part of my travel? I need to visit my family. We've had multiple people um, visit us in their RVs or their pull behinds. And even at our houses, they were moving because they said they just want to minimize the impact. And then it's really got them into the national parks and they started traveling. So it has a lot of ramifications. REI um, announced 
probably earlier this year, January or February, their partnership with West Elm, um, really well-timed partnership. So here's this, how can you be comfortable, fashionable, stylish in the outdoors and how can you really attract both a current um, clientele and a new clientele. So very, very good timing. Here's other social distancing images. We're seeing everyone from celebrities who are discovering rooftop tents um, to, you know, to all of us that have discovered that. So what are the different ways that we can become self-contained and distancing? And then really, um, you know, this, this explosion in RVs, um, whether it's RV sales or RV rentals, there's even a company called Outdoorsy and they do, they're like the Airbnb for RVs. So you can, you can register your RV and rent it. Um, rent it by the day, rent it by the week, rent it by the month, et cetera. So it's really perfect family time, social distancing time, and a way to really travel and be mobile. This is Laura Hills, who's part of the sports team at NPD, and her family invested in a new pole behind to do just that. And that's her daughter, who's learning to fly fish right along with her father right there in the stream. So it's we've all come out of this and said, what are the benefits? Um, really family connections. I think we we all agree that family time and outdoor fun. Um, so really as Matt kind of talked about retail and translating it to retail, how can you help facilitate this and, and how can you help facilitate the fun? Um, we just had, again, family come in. Um, people, so many people, they're camping in the backyard. We did this and so we said, well, how can we kind of take this element of fun and take it to these kids that have been, you know, really at home. We had um, nieces and nephews that have been in LA, in LA, in tiny houses locked up, you know, couldn't go to the beach, couldn't do that. And so what we did is we created, we bought badges on Etsy, we created these badges that they had to earn by doing all these different outdoor adventures from wildlife viewing to setting up campsites. And we found that it was one of the most brilliant things to keep eight to what, six to 12 year olds occupied. Um, and it was really fun and it added kind of this fun element to the outdoors. So how can you help families do this? Because really where we're at is we've decided we're gonna invest in, and I, I talked my husband into like the cooler um, we're running to and we're finding solace in the outdoors during this pandemic. So how can we capitalize? So um, thank you guys for your time today. Normally, if we were all together at OR, I would play um, an ad that I'd found that I thought was really relevant to the times today and really spoke to us. I'm not going to play it um, because who knows what the technical problems could be. Um, but if you want to type in Dick's Sporting Goods, Sweet Emotion, Dick Sporting Goods Aerosmith ad, um, Dick Sporting Goods See You Out There ad. This ad, um, to me, if I were giving awards, this would sum up exactly what we all want to see and hear right now, right? The news is depressing. Even ads are depressing. This ad doesn't sell a single product, doesn't actually say a single word. It plays the Aerosmith song Sweet Emotion, and it just shows people doing things in the outdoors. So really kind of to sum it up, like you hear the ad, you feel good, you look at it, you want to go outside, and it really sums up where we are right now, and then how are you at retail, and how are the products you're developing really connecting with consumers. But I encourage you, 60 seconds, and you're going to feel better. Um, so um, we want to thank you for your time. If you want to contact us, we do have, we have people ask a lot of this, um, do, we have, um, do we have more information? And we do have a trend sheet, which will show you kind of a high level summary. Um, you know, please email me at julia.day at npd.com. We'll send the trend sheet. Everybody knows how to follow Matt Powell on Twitter. Um, if you're a retailer, talk to our retail team. Ed Ray, we would love to engage. And um, Matt, I'm just going to kind of turn it over to you, see if you saw any questions you'd like to answer or um, kind of any uh, final words from you today. I was, uh, I was trying to look at the questions, but I kept taking the screen back from you. So um, <laughs> I apologize for that. Uh, let me just spin through here now. Um, 
I'll give you this. Why don't you do the same, Julie? If you see anything that's interesting, let's. Uh... I will. Let's look here. Um, and if you have asked us questions and we're not answering your questions now, we will answer them afterwards. Yes. Um, so there was a question about the impact of the election. You know, every year, every year we've been in an election, there's been a huge distraction uh, on the part of the consumer going into the election and then a, a sense of euphoria coming out that it's, it's over and the negative advertising has ended and so forth. Um, I think this year is going to be more polarized than ever. So uh, I, I have a feeling that that will be yet another uh, negative pull on this. So, uh, it, but typically there's a, the, the elections are a huge distraction to, uh, to the American consumer. Yeah, I see a question here. Do you anticipate these trends continuing remaining strong um, into spring 2021 camping, kayaking, camp chairs? exercise equipment. What are your thoughts on that, Matt? Well, it's, it's a mixed bag. I, you know, if you, if you bought a kayak in May, you probably don't need one next April. Um, so uh, to some extent, these purchases are one and done. Um, we talk a lot about this in the, in the, again, in the home appliance piece of the business. If you bought a pizza oven, you don't need a second one. So um, uh, I, I think some of these businesses will not maintain um, because uh, because people got, have one already and don't need another one. Um, I think it's incumbent upon us as an industry, though, to reach out to those novices and to, and the, and the entry level consumer who may be a little intimidated to come into the store, may not really be sure how they should buy a kayak, for instance, uh, and really and re really create a welcoming space where they feel safe for, to come in and. Um, and try new products. Uh, the key here is for growth, continued growth is, is not selling more to the people who already bought one, but finding more new people to sell them to. Yeah, and, and I mean, this is a huge opportunity in the bike business. Um, you know, everybody's talking about how can, you know, bike and outdoor really capitalize on these new consumers. And so, yes. you know, this, this is, um, huge opportunity. People are buying their first products and they really, as, as Matt, as you said, they're looking for people to guide them. Where can we go? How can we have more fun? How can we be more comfortable? What can we do? And so this is that great time to build that relationship. Yes, exactly. Um, question about will the mask uh, sales continue to grow? I think the answer is yes. Um, as, as more, uh, Comfortable masks are created, more safer masks are created, more artful masks are created. I think we're going to see uh, that business go continuing to grow. I don't see any time in the near term until there's a, a, a vaccine and most people have been vaccinated that we're, all, we're going to really feel safe uh, not wearing face covering. Um, and interestingly, one of the out, outdoor items is a neck gaiter that uh, uh, serves pretty efficiently as a, as a mask. And um, uh, I can see us having neck gaiters that match our outfits, much like we used to have a necktie or a scarf uh, that matched our outfits. So there, I think there's still some opportunity around, uh, around face coverings for sure. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, can't, I started buying the neck gaiters that exactly match the outfits and you know, we're bandanas and if you come to my house, you'll probably get one. Um, but um, we, somebody is asking a question here. There's a few, is this presentation recorded access later? Um, and so the answer is this will be available as an on-demand session this afternoon on, in the on-demand library at Outdoor Retailer Online. So in the on-demand library at Outdoor Retailer Online, Somebody said, how long will it be posted? Uh, somebody else said, I believe for a week or so, and then it will move to the OR website. Uh, it was a question about snow sports, um, whether it's gonna be down for the upcoming season. You know, I, I, I think snow sports offers much of the social distancing uh, attributes that we talked about in the, make our driving, cycling and running. Um, so I think people outside separately, uh, so, you know, um, uh, recreating somewhat independently, I, I think those businesses have the potential to be good. So also there's some, a, a number of questions on exercising and buying exercise equipment. Um, I, I think, and this is, um, this is me really anecdotally from talking to different people, but you know, as people, you know, maybe, you know, 
some people, their businesses, they were in self, self business, self service businesses or service businesses, and they closed down. Um, they've um, really talked about, yeah, I'm going to buy a Peloton or I'm going to invest in a rowing machine or I'm going to invest in this, but I'm saving up. And so, you know, again, people were saving their money um, while everything was really closed. Now they're saving up because they said, I just don't really want to go back to the gym again. So to kind of answer that question, um, you know, people are, and people that, you know, couldn't afford to go out and buy that piece of exercise equipment um, right now are saying, I'm saving it and this is going to be my Christmas present to myself. So I think we're going to, I would predict we'll see a, a continued growth in that. There's a question about um, uh, talking about our, our comments on e-commerce without the opportunity to see and touch gear, clothing and outerwear, and with the absence of a person uh, in, in outer, uh, interaction, um, what do you think uh, can be done online to best engage consumers? You know, I think curation of products, I think explanation of products. I often use truck bicycles as an example. On the, on the truck bicycle site, they have a, a a, a button to push that says, you know, help me pick a bike, pick out a bike. And they, you, they ask you six questions. And at the end of the six questions, they've recommended a bicycle for you. Um, I, I think any brand or retailer that can offer that kind of service to help customers zero down and maybe six isn't the magic number, but the point is that you're helping customers get to a decision tree that says, this is, this is the kayak that I need. This is the tent I need. This is the water bottle I need. Um, I, you know, I think those kinds of shared experiences and shared thoughts are, are really, uh, are really vital. Um, and then I think content about how I use the product, uh, how, how I enjoyed the product, um, just sharing that, uh, again, uh, with social distancing, we're going to, we're going to miss a lot of human contact. And I think, uh, we can use the internet as impersonal as it may seem to actually help, um, enhance a, a feeling of human contact. Um, and then here's, here's a question, Matt, we probably have time for like one or two more questions. Yeah. Um, this question, is there any sense of how much deferred delayed purchasing activity there is due to low inventory of bikes, camping gear, et cetera? Um, that's a tough I, one to answer. Uh, uh, you know, I think it's a, it's a spotty business out there. It depends on where you are, what retailer you're in. Um, uh, you know, I, I think, Again, I think if we if we welcome consumers into our stores and we let them know that we're back in stock on products, um, I, I think that yes, this this the, there will be a deferred purchase and people will come back in. Um, I think all of that's leavened by the economy though, and and where that goes and 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 how soon we get this this disease under control. But yes, I, I think there's there is absolutely room for continued uh, purchasing for products that are out of stock today. The one um, kind of my thoughts on this, and I've seen it um, again, a lot of it's anecdotal conversations with new people. So whether it's cycling or outdoor, et cetera, um, they're learning that because of the demand and because of the low inventory, people are learning like, I better just buy it. If I see it and I like it and it's, it's for me, then I need to make that investment. And, you know, I, I had somebody who, brand new to cycling, period. I mean, she didn't even have an old bike in her garage and really had never cycled. She invested in an e-bike. She tried to negotiate and she kept calling. And I finally said, you better buy it or you're not going to get an e-bike. But it's really converted her to cycling. And she just purchased a mountain bike off of that. So, yep. um, but, but consumers are, consumers will learn like if you want it and that's really what you want to invest in, you better buy it now. Agreed. I think that we better uh, wrap her up here. Great. So, um, so Matt, thank you so much for today. Um, there's a lot of comments online. Um, again, you can go to Outdoor Retailer On Demand to get the full recording. And um, Matt, we um, continue to wish you well in Maine. Um, we miss you. We can't wait to see you in person. And um, thank you for your insights today. Yeah, thanks. And thanks again, Julia, for all your detail in this and putting this together. And uh, thanks, everybody, for participating. Stay safe. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in person sometime soon. Yeah, we can't wait to see you in person. Thank you all.